um, the extraordinary thing about this debate tonight is we've heard a lot about the media, and we've heard a lot about politics and politicians, and we've heard bugger all about the British public and the British voter. And to listen to the members on the proposition front bench, one would think that voters and the public pay no part in this. I mean, just listen to some of the phrases that Mr. Lewis was regaling us with just now. He said at one point, it's the sun that tells people how to vote. What a contemptuous view that is of the British public. The idea that voters say, oh, I don't know how I'm going to vote today. Let's see what the sun says. Oh, yeah, we'll go and do that. <laughs> Mr. Lewis actually said at one point, the printed press control the floating voter. I mean, what a, a ridiculous comment. And what a snobbish, contemptuous, arrogant attitude it betrays and shows about the members of the proposition team about the third player in this debate, and that is the British public. And the British media have to, take, have to be constantly aware of the British public. They are their readers, their listeners, and their viewers. And the British media frequently act, are acting as a conduit between our elected representatives, our, our members of parliament, and our ministers, and the British public. The British public can voice their concerns through the media, through letters to the newspapers, through phone-in programmes, through uh, contact uh, with broadcasters, and nowadays, of course, through a vast amount of activity on the internet. And to consider this debate in isolation as one involving simply the media and the politicians is to only understand half the story. You can only understand the role of the media in this country and the role of politicians and the interaction between them by realizing that it is all about the British public who at the end of the day have the ultimate power to decide who governs us and who doesn't govern us. And that is vital to this whole debate. Now the, the, the new director general of the BBC, John, at George Entwistle, had the misfortune some years ago to be my, my, to be my editor on Newsnight. And um, he once told me, he said, you know, Michael, it's our job to come in here every day and say to ourselves, how are we going to f*** the government today? And then we didn't mean the government at that particular time, which was the, the Blair government. He meant governments, politicians in general. And that is the role of the media in our society, to hold politicians and the government to account. It's our responsibility and it is our duty to hold politicians to account. And in those circumstances, politicians should respect uh, journalists and should fear journalists in much the same way that they should respect the law. They should respect uh, and fear uh, members of parliamentary select committees. Journalism, the media, is part of the checks and balances in our society. Now, the trouble with the opposition arguments, the contemptuous way in which they uh, believe that all that Rupert Murdoch has to do is press a button in Sydney and millions of British voters will suddenly leap from Labour to Conservative and back again, is it just doesn't bear, uh, it doesn't accord with the facts. Surveys show, academic surveys show, that even in the famous year of 1992, it's the Sun what won it. In fact, uh, Sun readers were no more inclined to switch from uh, 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 Labour to Conservative than readers of other newspapers. Vast numbers of Sun readers were Labour voters and remained Labour voters. Vast numbers of Sun readers didn't even know that the Sun was supporting the Conservative Party. The reason Labour lost the 1992 election is not because of the Sun. Nobody seriously in British politics believes that anymore, even if they ever did. The reason why Labour lost the 1992 election and John Major won it is because the British public decided they preferred John Major to Neil Kinnock and they preferred the policies of, of John Major's Conservative Party to the policies of Neil Kinnock's Labour Party. Nobody's seriously arguing, are they, here tonight, that it was in 1979, the Jim Callaghan government, after all its troubles in the winter of discontent, would have sailed to a resounding victory 
If only Rupert Murdoch had stuck with Labour and stuck to the, uh, the socialism which had elected him uh, Secretary of the Oxford University Labour Club way back in 1992. Of course not. The reason why Labour lost the 1997, 1997 uh, 19, uh, uh, 79 general election is because it was clapped out, uh, is, is because of the winter of discontent, its relationship with the trade unions had broken down, and Margaret Thatcher and her party were, had come up with a more credible alternative. And that is why the Sun backed, backed Thatcher, and, and, it, and that is why the Sun realised that the tide was changing, and Rupert Murdoch realised that the tide was changing. And the same can be said of other elections, as we've heard tonight. We've heard a hell of a lot about Rupert Murdoch tonight. I know a fair bit about him. I, uh, I started writing a book about him, spent a year on it, in fact, until he bought my publisher. Um, <laughs> I, um, and I also... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and indeed, I, I, I am the first to accept that at times in the past, ministers have been, uh, have kowtowed to him at, at times in the past, and, and, and have actually, you know, in the, in the takeover of Times newspapers way back in 1981, for instance, or B Sky B's, uh, B, uh, Sky's takeover of uh, British satellite broadcasting in round about uh, whenever it was, 1990, uh, there have been occasions when ministers have uh, bent in his favour. However, I stand proudly here tonight as the former organiser of the Shareholders United Against Murdoch campaign, which persuaded Peter Mandelson to refer uh, the proposed takeover to the Monopolies Commission, and the Monopolies Commission argued, uh, came out in our favour, and Peter uh, and Stephen Byers endorsed that. That was not, uh, that was not politicians kowtowing uh, to Rupert Murdoch, but in any case, Rupert Murdoch is finished. And, the, uh, and so is James Murdoch in this country. Indeed, the days of the old media proprietors are long gone. The Northcliffs and the Murdochs and the Maxwells and the, and the Beaverbrooks. And the arguments on the proposition front bench are just so outdated. You know, here we have these re semi-retired media <laughs> hacks, these, these professors of journalism, these extinct volcanoes. <laughs> <laughs> and all they can talk about, all they can talk about is Rupert Murdoch. I mean, you know, Rupert, an endorsement from Rupert Murdoch now would be the kiss of death Absolutely. to any serious politician in this country today. Um, uh, uh, the world has moved on. There is not going to be a, a newspaper proprietor uh, of, of, that, of, the, of those kind in this country ever again. And one of the reasons is, is because newspapers are, are, are themselves in rapid decline. We saw when Ian polled the audience here tonight just how few people read newspapers. Most people in this country today... Point of, point of, point of yes, order. Yeah. What, what, what Ian asked was, who bought a newspaper today? All right, let's ask... Who, read, right. who read it online? <laughs> All right. <laughs> who, who listens to the radio? Who watches television? Who, who, who watch, looks at the internet? Who reads blogs? The world has moved on from the cosy days when you were editing the Daily Mirror. People get their news and they get their ideas from masses of sources. And that is the wonderful thing about this country today and our politics. Even in the last five years, we've become much more plural in our media. No longer can a single newspaper uh, even pretend to influence uh, voters in, uh, by some extraordinary mechanism uh, in, 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 in marginal seats. It doesn't work like that uh, anymore. The world has moved on and there is a massive plurality in today's media. And for everybody arguing that people ought to vote Labour, there's another lot arguing you ought to vote Conservative. And that's the problem with your argument. I mean, all these people influenced supposedly by the sun in all these elections, but what happened to all the people influenced by the Daily Mirror and, and told to vote Labour by the Daily Mirror? Why, why have you discounted all of, all of them? It's a much more complicated setup uh, than, 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 you're, than you're making out. What's more, politics has moved on. Politics is no longer about single, powerful prime minister. We now live in a world of multi-party government. The, uh, we live in a world of multi-party government. We live in a world in which individual members of parliament are much more assertive, much more independent. And so even if, even if there was any truth in the old days that uh, some politicians were in the, in the pockets of some of the media, it's certainly no longer true. Thank goodness the, the world is rapidly changing. The days of the old newspaper proprietors uh, are, are rapidly in decline, and we are now li living in a world which is much healthier, which is much more diverse, 
and um, is, much, is, is far removed from uh, the idea of this motion. I forget what the motion is, but it's a, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a ludicrous motion, actually. It's a ludicrous motion. I mean, it says, British politics is in the pocket, singular, of the media, plural. The media in this country doesn't have one pocket. The media in this country has thousands and thousands of pockets, thousands and thousands of diverse pockets. It plays a healthy role in the interaction of our democratic process and should be supported, and this motion should be opposed.